Hello, good evening, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth for evening prayer on Friday the 11th of February. We sing the Church of England's Common Worship Daily Prayer for uh, evening prayer on Friday during ordinary time. If you're following in the book, you'll need to turn up after prayer during the day at the beginning. There's a section called uh, Morning and Evening Prayer During Ordinary Time. Evening prayer on Friday is in there. One may look it up uh, online at Aremus Daily Prayer or the Church of England's website and download apps for Apple or Android devices. We're going out on YouTube, Zoom and Facebook. The Zoom codes are on the Blythe Church's Facebook page and website. We're live streaming on their Facebook page and it stays up to watch this video later. I upload the audio onto my Dominic Doble YouTube channel in due course and I'm here in the building. Very welcome to join me here 8 and 6 every day bar Monday. On Sunday we have traditional communion at 8 and uh, said even song with hymns at 6. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. A song of entreaty. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and in your faithfulness give ear to my supplications. Answer me in your righteousness. Enter not into judgment with your servant, for in your sight shall no one living be justified. My spirit faints within me. My heart within me is desolate. I stretch out my hands to you. My soul gasps for you like a thirsty land. O Lord, make haste to answer me. My spirit fails me. Hide not your face from me, lest I be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear of your loving kindness in the morning, for in you I put my trust. Show me the way I should walk in, for I lift up my soul to you. Teach me to do what pleases you, for you are my God. Let your kindly spirit lead me on a level path. Revive me, O Lord, for your name's sake, for your righteousness' sake. Bring me out of trouble. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. The psalm set for this evening is number 35. If you are following it in the book, you'll find it at the back in the Psalter. Online, we just scroll on a little to it. I'll read it straight through. If we had somebody that was audible to the rest of us, they'd read the even-numbered verses, ideally. So you're welcome to join in and listen to all, read all, or just the even-numbered verses alongside the refrain in the Glory Be, to which we'll, um, which we'll say bef uh, before we return to the refrain in conclusion. And uh, we'll pause briefly that people may read and uh, use the prayer that is offered after the psalm as they find it useful. Psalm 35. Give me justice, O Lord my God, according to your righteousness. Contend, O Lord, with those that contend with me. Fight against those that fight against me. Take up shield and buckler, and rise up to help me. Draw the spear and bar the way against those who pursue me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let those who seek after my life be shamed and disgraced. Let those who plot my ruin fall back and be put to confusion. Let them be as chaff before the wind, with the angel of the Lord thrusting them down. Let their way be dark and slippery, with the angel of the Lord pursuing them. For they have secretly spread a net for me without a cause. Without any cause they have dug a pit for my soul. Let ruin come upon them unawares. Let them be caught in the net they laid. Let them fall in it to their destruction. Then will my soul be joyful in the Lord and glory in his salvation. My very bones will say, Lord, who is like you? You deliver the poor from those that are too strong for them, the poor and needy from those who would despoil them. False witnesses rose up against me. They charged me with things I knew not. They rewarded me evil for good to the desolation of my soul. 
But as for me, when they were sick, I put on sackcloth and humbled myself with fasting. When my prayer turned empty to my bosom, it was as though I grieved for my friend or brother. I behaved as one who mourns for his mother, bowed down and brought very low. But when I stumbled, they gathered in delight. They gathered together against me, as if they were strangers I did not know. They tore at me without ceasing. When I fell, they mocked me. They gnashed at me with their teeth. O Lord, how long will you look on? Rescue my poor soul from their ravages and my poor life from the young lions. I will give you thanks in the great congregation. I will praise you in the mighty throng. Do not let my treacherous foes rejoice over me, or those who hate me without a cause mock me with their glances. For they do not speak of peace, but invent deceitful schemes against those that are quiet in the land. They opened wide their mouths and derided me, saying, We have seen it with our very eyes. This you have seen, O Lord, do not keep silent. Go not far from me, O Lord. Awake, arise to my cause, to my defence, my God and my Lord. Give me justice, O Lord, my God, according to your righteousness. Let them not triumph over me. Let them not say to themselves our heart's desire. Let them not say we have swallowed him up. Let all who rejoice at my trouble be put to shame and confusion. Let those who boast against me be clothed with shame and dishonour. Let those who favour my cause rejoice and be glad. Let them say always great is the Lord who delights in his servant's well-being. So shall my tongue be talking of your righteousness and of your praise all the day long. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Give me justice, O Lord my God, according to your righteousness. Scrolling past our first reading to the Song of the Justified, turning back in the book to evening prayer on Friday in ordinary time. Our hope is not in vain because God's love has been poured into our hearts. God reckons as righteous those who believe, who believe in him who raised Jesus from the dead. For Christ was handed over to death for our sins and raised to life for our justification. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Christ we have gained access to the grace in which we stand and rejoice in our hope of the glory of God. We even exult in our sufferings, for suffering produces endurance, and endurance brings hope, and our hope is not in vain, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. God proves his love for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have been justified by his death, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath? Therefore we exult in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have now received our reconciliation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our hope is not in vain, because God's love has been poured into our hearts. Our first Bible reading may be found in the Hebrew Scriptures. It's uh, the Chronicles, first book of Chronicles in the history section. <clears throat> Kings, Kings, Chronicles, Chronicles, chapter 29. That's a large number at the head of the paragraph. 29, small number, 21 is the verse number. <clears throat> so if you've got a Holy Bible off the shelf, um, flick through about a quarter of the way in. You should hit uh, Chronicles, flick to or fro. If not, do use an index if it doesn't fall open at once. Online, it's just before the canticle we read a moment ago. 1 Chronicles 29 from 21. <laughs> On the next day, the whole assembly offered sacrifices and burnt offerings to the Lord, a thousand bulls, a thousand rams, a thousand lambs, and, their, and with their libations and sacrifices in abundance for all Israel. And they ate and drank before the Lord on that day with great joy. As they made David's son Solomon king, sorry, they made David's son Solomon king a second time. They anointed him as the Lord's prince and Zadok as priest. Then Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord, succeeding his father David as king. He prospered and all Israel obeyed him. All the leaders and the mighty warriors and also the sons of King David pledged their allegiance to King Solomon. The Lord highly exalted Solomon in the sight of all Israel and bestowed upon him such royal majesty as had not been on any king before him in Israel. Thus David, son of Jesse, reigned over all Israel. The period that he reigned over Israel was 40 years. He reigned for seven years in Hebron and 33 years in Jerusalem. He died at a good old age, full of days, riches and honour, and his son Solomon succeeded him. Now the acts of King David from first to last are written in the record of the seer Samuel. 
and in the records of the prophet Nathan, and in the records of the seer Gad, with accounts of all his rule and his might, and of the events that befell him in Israel and all the kingdoms of the earth. I've no idea which is who. We've got um, first and second books of Samuel. I guess that's the Acts of David recorded by Samuel. And I don't know whether Nathan and Gad are uh, the Chronicles or the Kings. But uh, as I've said before, and I'll say it again, the writer of Chronicles here is very keen to let us know that it's basically David's project, this um, temple building business. And uh, so that's why we've had for the last two or three evenings great long accounts of David setting everything in place so that Solomon effectively just has to sit there and watch it all take shape. Whereas other um, the other history books make it much clearer, at least one of them makes it much, uh, it gives the impression that it is very much more of uh, Solomon's actual work went into the temple, or at least his organising and his overseeing. But uh, we've had the generosity of people voluntarily giving. We've had uh, David thanking God for God's generosity through them. And then we have this uh, great feasting and celebration that the temple is ready to go uh, with these sacrifices, burnt offerings, animals killed before God, then eaten and enjoyed alongside libations, with all Israel eating and drinking together with great joy. I'm not quite sure. I guess it's because you have these little excerpts day by day, um, so we don't run necessarily through the story. I forget why we've got Solomon made king a second time. Maybe it's just to make sure. Maybe it's just because... Uh, David is now going, gone. <clears throat> Maybe they want to establish him as the Lord's prince. I don't know. But uh, we're told Solomon sits on the throne of the Lord, prospering in all respects. And then we have the conclusion of David's life. That's the epitaph that a king would have wanted. Good old age, full of days, same thing. Riches and honour, effectively the same thing. Uh, well, no, maybe not. And his son Solomon succeeding him leaving a male heir on the throne, that uh, he may live on in his boy. We thank God for David, the great, great, great grandfather of Jesus, and his establishing of temple worship in Jerusalem, true worship of the true God. <clears throat> With that spirit of joy and generosity, may we maintain that same charism as we look after these buildings that are representations of God's presence among us. Clearly God created all things and so we are not able to contain God in our church buildings. Nevertheless, they are designed to reflect and understand and explain why and how we worship and the significance of God in earth. And so we hope and pray that when we end our days, we'll be able to end full of years and leave others behind us to take on the faith and take it up with joy. To John 16, our second reading, if you're following online, scroll past the canticle. If you are following in a Bible, it's the fourth of the Gospels that open the second covenant, say two thirds of the way through. You open, you should find uh, either the minor prophets with very Hebrew sounding names or uh, arguably more familiar traditional English names, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, which equally, I guess, are old Hebrew names, but uh, I hope you understand my meaning. Matthew, Mark, Luke and then John, chapter 16, large number at the head of the paragraph is 16, and then small numbers in the text are the verses, and again we're going verse 16 to 22. John 16 from 16. Online scroll past the canticle read earlier. Jesus said to his disciples, a little while and you will no longer see me, and again a little while and you will see me. Then some of his disciples said to one another, what does he mean by saying to us, a little while and you will no longer see me, and again a little while and you will see me. And because I am going to the Father, they said, what does he mean by this, a little while? We do not know what he is talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, are you discussing among yourselves what I mean when I said, a little while and you will no longer see me, and again a little while and you will see me? Very truly I tell you, you will weep and mourn, but the world will rejoice. You will have pain, but your pain will turn into joy. When a woman is in labour, she has pain because her hour has come. But when her child is born, she no longer remembers the anguish because of the joy of having brought a human being into the world. So you have pain now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. T 
typical of the Johannine material, repetitive, dense, poetic, and uh, excellent sort of Hebrew dramatic device. We've got a saying, we're told that Jesus says it, we're told the disciples discussing the same saying, so it gets an opportunity to repeat it, and then we're told that he knows um, what they're talking about, and so he gets to repeat it again. So it gets it properly into our heads that uh, for a while we won't see Jesus, and then we will. And uh, Jesus explains, Very truly I tell you, you'll weep and mourn, but the world will rejoice, but your pain will turn into joy. Written by and for a religious community, slightly estranged because they're set apart by virtue of the way they lived, therefore probably subject to greater, fiercer persecution than if they lived more normally, if you like, in community. And so they are feeling the pain of persecution. They are missing Jesus, no doubt. <clears throat> but maybe this is a liturgical saying for them. A little while and you will no longer see me. And again, a little while and you will see me. I suspect it's an expression they use. Maybe it was even like a password at their gates. Like uh, the lift up your heads, O ye gates, that the King of glory may come in. Um, use the end of that psalm, password, that the gates of Jerusalem may be opened. Maybe it was just used like that as a way of them greeting each other, that they know, knew who they were to keep each other safe. But you have pain now, but I will see you again. May that be an encouragement to us in our own day as we struggle with anxiety, hurt and pain, lack of fulfilment, oppression, especially if it relates to our faith. We have pain now, but Jesus says to us as to his disciples, I will see you again and then our hearts will rejoice. So to the response really back in evening prayer on Friday in ordinary time. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord, of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. The Song of Mary. You have, lift, you have scattered the proud in their conceit, and lifted up the lowly. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You have scattered the proud in their conceit, and lifted up the lowly. Let us pray. Saviour, sacrifice, seal, three in one, one in three. We come to you at the end of this day. And we look back over it at those moments where we have known your presence with us, where those things you won for us on the cross have been revealed and manifest, where we have been aware of your presence, your direction, your guidance, your power, your enabling, your gifts, your talents, where we have felt a sense of belonging, of privilege, of self-determination, of wealth, of purpose. We thank you for all these expressions of the same this day. We also, however, may, looking back over the day, have felt distant, broken, hurt, insecure, uncertain, ignored, put upon. We may feel we've even lacked our own ability to make progress. We may have let others down and you. So at the end of the day, we come asking that you will provide for us from your great treasure trove of mercy and grace and that we might experience some of your healing your restoration and your redemption from release international we pray for dai ji kao and his family in china he leads the tai shu group the family have been detained threatened and had their flat vandalized police rent the flat next door so that they may monitor them closely 
turning to Christian Aid's prayer diary. <clears throat> for today, the 11th, we pray for full and equal access and participation for women and girls in science. I presume that's across the world, but it may be for a specific nation. We add our amen, especially to those nations such as Afghanistan, where women's role was much more Western until very recently. And now they're having to reel back. And uh, those, particularly women who taught, as well as women who learned, are having to be very careful. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Newmarket All Saints Church and their lead clergy, Robert, Susan and Sue. We pray too for their permission to officiate their uh, elders, readers, and their lay contingent alongside the readers and elders, I guess. Uh, so church wardens, treasurers and secretaries. Also the others, other officers on their PCCs, their members on the electoral, people on the electoral roll, uh, members of congregations and people in their communities with whom they have dealings. We pray that all may be encouraged <clears throat> by the generosity and wonder of uh, being able to worship in glorious buildings. in between the time of your being and your returning in a little while. May that return be an encouragement to these whom we pray. And we thank you for our church schools in the Milden Hall Deanery, Elverden, Moulton, St Mary's, All Saints, St Christopher's and Red Lodge. And we pray for the pupils and that all the staff, governors, parents do to enable all of them will be recognised and build them up into the people that they may be, setting them on their way. We pray especially for those with special educational needs and those with pupil premium, that they will have, and those that should be being recognised in that way, but maybe aren't. We ask that uh, relationships may grow and develop with the families and the school, that uh, all may do their best for these young people. And we pray for Erasto, who is in Lushunga Parish, in Biharamulo, Link Diocese. We pray God's blessing on them and their work. May you build your church in that place. Moving to our places, we ask your blessings on the businesses and uh, people of Linstead Road, Cookley Street, Mary's Lane in Cookley. Low Road, Clay Hill, Barrows Hill, Heveringham Road, Church Road, Halesworth Road, Heveringham Long Road, the street in Heveringham. Brick Kiln Lane, Barrows Hill, the street, Laundry Lane, Bridge Street, Linstead Road, Cratfield Road in Huntingfield and in Walpole. Halesworth Road, Bramfield Road, Peasen Hall Road, Cookley Street, Cookley Road, the Clink, Neve Close and Church Hill. We ask that to those who believe who live in these, pla live in these places um, will be encouraged in their faith <coughs> and will recognise the full merits of what you have done for us in your coming and living among us, your dying, your resurrecting, your sending of the Spirit. May that be an encouragement and an inspiration for them in their lives in these places. We pray for the businesses represented by these addresses, either serving them or based there. We ask that uh, they will make sound decisions in relation to um, staffing, pricing, clients, suppliers, that they may not only do well and uh, be able to continue to contribute to the local economy uh, and uh, live well themselves, but also that they might develop and grow a name for themselves as being you know, ethical, equitable, green. And that that would be to their benefit. My corona cycle, we pray for those who are sick with the disease, those who have it long term, those who are isolating either at the beginning or the end of that period with the insecurities at the moment, which will be cleared away, admittedly, when we're allowed to do as we please in a month or so's time. We pray for those who are have just tested positive, those who are in hospital, those who are particularly vulnerable and uh, for whom COVID adds a complication to another condition. Remember those who are dying today. And we think of those around the world who have not had access to vaccines because of our selfishness, not have access to the same sort of care in hospitals, I guess, ditto. 
And so we pray that you'll be merciful to them and to us. We ask your blessing on Nick, Liz, Anthony, Peter, Betty, Maggie, John, Ron, Sarah, Valerie, Beryl, Barbara, Di, Dennis, Kay, David, Jean, Olive, Paddy, Lillian, Emily, Mike, Doreen, Margaret, Malcolm, Fred, and others for whom life at the moment is tricky. We pray that they will know your presence, your provision, your healing, the certainty of faith. May that be an encouragement to them, where that is their experience. We pray that those who assist them will be able to say and do the right thing at the right time. And finally, we thank you for all the good in the lives of Len, Ron, Jean, Des, Susan, Arnold, Basil, Claire, Muriel and Jean. We pray for those who died suddenly and unprepared through sickness, violence, neglect, accident, those that have taken their own lives. Remember those we've known and loved and see no longer, and those who have served you faithfully here. And all whose years mine enforce at this time, rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. We pray for ourselves and all who mourn the loss of a loved one or a change in life chances, that you will be for us the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. and here we get for much of her like a list of the for her to get off. For you send her like a year for any is the rep with the lost of her mirror of her head. She had from your son of the shima of her guest. She had no form of good year as she had a very much better than you lost that in she smelled the lost to cover my wallash. She had from a just of my chassing Elysia as a mock what I lost no one could be much about your lost of her see it much with him and the other stuff out. The evening prayer collect for Friday in the book. Ordinary time, heal us, O God, from all our afflictions and keep us steadfast in your love. Bind up our wounds, raise us from death, lead us to fullness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube.